uh, our first ever virtual candle lighting ceremony. Um, we have um, uh, our traditional performance tonight. So we are going to um, do as much, as close to our summer candle lighting ceremony as possible. For those of you um, that are unfamiliar with what we've been doing for our, our candle lighting ceremony, um, so it is a, a, the end of session ceremony we do. We typically do it after our campfire where we all head up into the chapel. Um, it's a great way uh, to end the session. Um, we hear some speeches um, on healthy bodies, open minds, awakened spirit, which is a great part of our ceremony. Um, and it's a really special event for us uh, at Hazen. Um, we show our respect at candle lighting ceremony in a couple different ways. Um, one of the ways is that uh, throughout the ceremony, we are all silent. And one of the great things about Zoom is that in a moment, everyone will be muted. And we'll be muted for the, the duration of our candle lighting ceremony. Um, another way, so uh, in, in this is a great way. So if you want to show your appreciation for any of the speakers, and there's going to be a couple times that you're um, asked to raise your hand, things like that, you can just do so. So if we show appreciation instead of clapping um, at our candle lighting ceremonies, we do it with spirit fingers. So if everyone right now wants to, to show each other, show us how we show our appreciation, perfect. Um, awesome. That's exactly how we're going to do it throughout the whole campfire. Uh, excuse me, candle lighting. Um, without further ado, so we have a great lineup for you. Um, I just posted in the chat um, the link to the, uh, the part of our website that's going to be having updated um, virtual camp activities. So we did have our first campfire last week. We have another campfire um, every other week. Um, we have a lot of other events, so keep up to date with that. Um, it's a great way to stay connected, great way to um, have a little bit of haze in our lives. We are calling it Bring Hazen Home. So without further ado, if everyone could please uh, give their attention to and enjoy our candle lighting ceremony. is Edward W. Hazen. Over the past 100 years, the shores of Cedar Lake have been a place where we have all had a chance to share in the spirit of Camp Hazen. You had a good time, made new friends, learned new skills, and most importantly, each of you played with responsibility, listened with care, treated each other with respect, spoke honestly, and lived in unity. And I am proud with what I have seen. So please join me and be a part of one of Hazen's most special traditions, the candlelighting ceremony, so that we can watch this spirit grow once more. The light and warmth of this flame represents the spirit of Camp Hazen. Many candles can be lit from this one light without the original ever becoming dimmed. Much like this, the spirit of camp will never decrease by being shared. I pass this light onto you all tonight so that we can share in that spirit once more. This candle represents the spirit of Camp Hazen YMCA. It represents the more than 99,000 campers and staff who have sat here before you. Since 1920, campers, staff, alumni, and friends have joined together to celebrate our time at Hazen. I stand here as did my predecessors, Pop Stanley, Archie Knowles, Howard Bunting, Russ Gormley, Sue Edmonds, and Tim Milburn. I'd like everyone to take a moment and close your eyes. I want you to think about your time at Hazen, whether it was last summer or if it was five, 10, or even 50 years ago. 
I'd like you to think about the people that you met while you were there. Some who are like you, others who are very different. I want you to think about all the new things that you learned, how to climb the wall, how to sail, how to play the guitar. Think about the games and the songs that you've learned. But I especially want you to think about your new friends and the people that you met. The people that you feel, even today, that you've known forever. People that you were able to be yourself with and people that you didn't have to pretend with. Now you can open your eyes and realize that you too have experienced the spirit, the spirit of Camp Hayes and YMCA. The symbol of the YMCA is the triangle and it's the strongest shape where each side supports the others. Luther Gulick thought to use the triangle to symbolize the YMCA to show that an individual needs strength in three parts of their life to be whole, in body, in mind, and in spirit. At Camp Hayes and YMCA, we help you build healthy bodies, open minds, and awaken spirits. To talk to us tonight about healthy bodies is alumnus Daphne Fodderin. Unmute myself. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> When thinking about health, what a healthy body needs, I'd often envision healthy eating habits and lots of exercise, failing to acknowledge what we really need to make those lifestyle choices possible. If we are unable to value our bodies as the temple they truly are, our choices can become flawed. A healthy body isn't possible without also having a healthy mind. In fact, Buddha used to say, to keep the body in good health is a duty, otherwise we shall not be able to keep our minds strong and clear. This couldn't make, ring more true. When I was young, I was active. In fact, I was so active that I rarely focus on anything other than being active. Although I may have looked the part, the way I grew to see myself was skewed. When I was young, I can remember my mom bringing me home a new pair of jean shorts. When I put them on, I told her I could never wear them. Couldn't she see my thunder thighs were out of control? I know this sounds funny, and it is now, but in the moment, the reflection I saw was not the way I truly was. The number of pounds on the scale couldn't change the way that I viewed myself. It was when I came to camp that I began to see myself through a different lens, a hazen lens, if you will. Rather than comparing my body to those around me, I chose to embrace them for who they were and what they stood for. It was in these moments when my mind was clear that I was able to differentiate the perception of a healthy body versus the reality of one. I gained the confidence to jump off the leap of faith, dance like a lunatic in the dining hall, and play gaga with the best of them. I rewrote my idea of myself and saw myself the way I always have been, the way that I continue to be, healthy. Now more than ever, the connection between healthy minds and bodies is crucial. As we quarantine, we owe it to ourselves to make choices that benefit our minds and bodies, as we expect those around us to do the same. In closing, Mark Twain once said, the only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. To that I say, come on, Mark, walk off that bad mood. Didn't you know that walking improves your mood and makes you happier? To, to speak to us tonight about open minds is alumnus Scott Ritter. Uh, hey, uh, so it seems only fitting to start this out by sharing a little bit of my own Hazen story. So a little over 20 years ago, I walked into cabin two to start my first session of overnight camp. That morning, my brother and I had packed up our trunks and left New York City with our parents driving up I-95 to Chester, Connecticut. I was excited to spend two weeks playing baseball on real grass, uh, swimming in Cedar Lake, and making tie-dye shirts in arts and crafts. Then my parents left, and I lost it. I was as homesick as they come. I cried a lot. My stomach hurt. 
My counselors, bless their hearts, tried to help, but I was completely shut down. I wrote my parents a postcard. Let's see if this works. Here it is. Dear mom and dad, I feel sick and I want to go home. Can you send me an email before you come pick me up? Then I can tell you if I want to then. Love, Scotty. I never actually put that postcard in the mail. It sat in my trunk, waiting to be sent, and suddenly something had changed. The crying slowed, and I made friends with a counselor from a place an eight-year-old Scotty had never heard of, Australia. I tried Vegemite for the first time. He introduced me to my bunkmates, and we all played Foursquare together. Two weeks flew by, and before you knew it, my whole cabin was performing Rough Riders at closing campfire. When I got back home, I complained to my parents that I was camp sick. I wanted to go back. So started a decade of camp days and summers, some of the best days and months and years of my entire life. That feeling that I felt the first year though, that twinge of homesickness, the knot in my stomach, was something that really never went away. You know that feeling on the leap of faith when you have to switch from climbing up the ladder to using the pegs on the tree? It's like a gut punch. It's like those butterflies in your stomach right before your cue to go on stage during the all, all camp performance of Shrek. It's that feeling during your first year as a counselor during session A, when you welcome campers to your cabin for the first time. You're like, man, I hope they think I'm cool. But when you conquer that fear, when you yell safe after putting both feet on, your ground, on the ground at the leap of faith, or you deliver that final line in the play, or you send all your campers home with a lifetime of memories, that feeling, that, that nervous energy, the fear, that, the fear of everything that, that could go wrong, and sometimes things do go wrong, but that fear becomes an accomplishment. So an open mind is seeking out and opening yourself up to new and scary foreign experiences. An open mind is being vulnerable and admitting that sometimes you don't have the solution, but you have the tools and the support to figure it out along the way. An open mind isn't a certificate that you can hang up on the wall. It's a horizon that you continually push and challenge. So here's my commitment to build an open mind. And I hope that you'll take this journey with me. I'm gonna finally read that book that's been sitting on my nightstand. The one that seems a little too intense and too large and too complicated for my mind right now. I'm gonna seek out some old friends who I haven't spoken to in too long, long enough where you kind of feel bad that it's been so long. And I'm gonna see what they're up to. And I'm gonna volunteer when safe and appropriate with organizations I believe in to continue expanding my worldview and meeting like-minded people. So let's find those experiences that seem too intimidating to take a first step. And let's take those chances to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone and connect with the people that make us feel a little bit more vulnerable. Together with an open mind, I'm confident that we together can get through anything. Thank you. To speak with us tonight about Awakened Spirits, alumnus Amber Paulson. Good evening or good morning. The great Albus Dumbledore said, happiness can be found in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really struggling to awaken in the morning at the moment. I guess it's my days aren't as busy or full or timed. I don't get up to go to work, to see my friends, to visit my family. If there is something I need to do, it can wait till tomorrow. It'll still be there. It's not going anywhere and neither am I. Now, please remember, that's sad Amber talking. That's confused Amber trying to process. That's frustrated Amber trying to express herself. It's also a little bit of hangry Amber because she hasn't made herself some world famous hazen cookies yet. Shout out to Chef Stro for bringing the recipes to the people. It's okay for me to feel all of these feelings while still making sure they don't consume my light or my spirit. If I had a superpower, 
I'd like it to be flying, being able to soar above the world and to see it in all its beautiful wonder, breathtaking. The closest I can get to flying day to day is jumping on my trampoline. If you've ever been to a trampoline park with me, you'll know I walk in, I immediately stop and stare all around me. Suddenly, my eyes go wide. I get this big goofy grin on my face and I start running. What you can't see is my heart beating really fast or feel the electricity pumping through my body or the spark in every action. To me, an awakened spirit is when you stop worrying about dimming your sparkle to match others, when what you choose to do fills you with so much light and so much life that you can't stop grinning. Your spirit is always there. Sometimes you just need to wake it up to use its power to help you. Just because we're physically distanced right now doesn't mean we're all alone. Everybody look to your left. Look to your right, look up, look down, look behind you, look in front of you, look at your phone's contacts list, look at your email address list, look at the pile of letters on your bench, look out your window. See, you have countless people and animals to connect with in countless ways. I know it's still hard to remember that sometimes, so I'll share with you a memory I have locked in my brain that I bring out when life seems a bit too much. One night during last summer, I sat down on the GV bench in the middle of the girls' village at about 9 p.m. I was tired, exhausted, and in a bad mood. As I was sitting there going through the lists of things I had to do, I heard it. Laughter giggling, jokes, people getting ready for bed, lines for the play being rehearsed, cabin 10, talking to cabin 11, still. That's when my bad mood disappeared. I felt that spirit in me well up with happiness and purpose. I knew that everything was gonna be okay. Even in that moment, I was by myself, completely alone physically. I wasn't really alone. I had heaps of people all around me. All I had to do was take the time to feel their energy, hear their voices and sense their spirit, or just give them a shout out if I needed it. And that's what we need to do now. We need to find those moments where we remember to turn up or awaken our spirit. Happiness can be found in the darkest of times if only one remembers to turn on the light. And so we can see that the light from one candle can grow and spread just as the spirit of Camp Hazen does. At this time, uh, we'd like to recognize a few groups of people. And the first are our legacies. Camp Hazen legacies are campers and staff or alumni whose parents or grandparents have been at camp before them. So if you are a Camp Hazen legacy, I would like you to raise your hand. And then we recognize our lifers. Lifers are, again, campers, staff, alumni who have spent five or more summers at Camp Hazen YMCA. I would like you to please raise your hand to be recognized. And then we have our Camp Hazen legends. Our legends have spent 10 or more years on the shores of Cedar Lake. I would like each of you to raise your hands to be uh, recognized. And finally, and we just added this group um, a, a couple years ago, we just started talking about this group, and that's our luminaries. And Camp Hazen luminaries have spent 20 or more summers at Camp Hazen YMCA. I would like you to please raise your hands.
And now to talk to us about our Honor Campers and our Staff Roundtable, Kath Davies. At this point in our ceremony, we would like to recognize those of us amongst us who during our time together exemplified living by our five pillars here at Camp Hazen. Our five pillars, as I'm sure you are pillars, pillars, as I'm sure you know, are caring, honesty, respect, responsibility, and unity. If you have been recognized as an honor camper in the past or have been a member of our staff, staff roundtable, please give us a wave. And so we can see that the light from the one candle has continued to grow. At this time, if you have your candle, I would like you to please light it. We can see the light grow just as the spirit of Camp Hazen grows. And we all have that Hazen spirit inside of us. You know that at times like now, when you're at home and you're missing camp, or you're having a tough time, when it's cold and snowy outside, and when things just aren't quite going your way, you need to think about the Hazen spirit that you have inside you right this minute. I want you to think about your friends, your counselors, your cabin mates, and I want you to think about the great times that you had while you were here. Again, hold your candle up, and I want you to remember how you felt the last time that you, that you were on the shores of Cedar Lake. And remember that this spirit is always with you and that it is never that far away. Please join me in singing the Camp Hazen alma mater. By the pines of our Camp Hazen, on old sea lake, there's a lake of
All right, everyone, thanks again for joining us for another virtual camp uh, activity. Um, we've really tried to um, bring Hazen Hayes in to bring um, a lot of our traditional camp activities during this, this tough time. Um, to let you know what's happening next, I already uh, put the link in the chat. Um, so tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, we are gonna be having on Instagram Live, a live cultural moment. So Jake um, Fernandez has been choosing some staff, so we'll see who he, inter yeah, who he interviews. We have to show up on Instagram Live at 10 a.m. Um, next week, we have a few different things. We have a cabin chat on Tuesday night with Kath. So it's just gonna be a nice, um, uh, it's 5 p.m. on Tuesday, it's gonna be a, a chat. So we'll use Zoom breakout rooms to have some different discussions. On Wednesday with uh, Ben Stopka, it's gonna be some riddles and games. And then on Thursday um, at 10 a.m., we're gonna do it in the morning, we are gonna have our a second campfire. It's in the morning because we have lots of Europeans that missed the last one because it was so late for them. Uh, so 10 a.m., sing songs, maybe uh, watch a couple of skits, things like that. Um, so if anyone wants to follow along, um, John, uh, it's one more time, it's camphazenymca.org slash youth dash family. Thank you all um, for attending. Um, and uh, I hope um, bringing Hazen home um, a little bit, bringing some, uh, some light in, the, in a really confusing and frustrating time for everyone. Thank you all so much.